Welcome to the Polysite Podcast. This is your host, Anthony Lindsay. And Stephanie Moreno. All right, we're here with Wendy Terry. And all right, so, uh, Steph, you have some questions for her. I do. Hello, Wendy. Hi. So my first question for you is the first book in your series uh, was Rampart Guards. That's right. Awesome. It's been described as an action-packed, character-driven novel. How do you capture the reader's attention? How do you balance fantasy with the real world? Well, you know what I did with this one? I actually blended it in with the real world. So this one, it doesn't have a, it's not epic fantasy where I created everything. It's actually uh, takes place in the world that we know around us. And the creatures are, are taken from stories that we've all heard, like the, the, about the Loch Ness Monster Mm -hmm. or Bigfoot. And there's a whole bunch of those in the world that people have talked about that aren't as well known. And I started learning about them and thought, how, how could there be so many stories about these creatures in our world that none have been proven to be real? And could they live here? How would that work? And I started to to, uh, think about that and created a whole world of how that would happen. And that's actually what the rampart is. So uh, that it is all real stuff, and every creature, excuse me, every creature in the book you can actually look up on the internet. I didn't make any of them up, and people have stories about seeing them, and there's videos of some of them, and so it's it's really fun just to to put it in our real world and make us all think about, hmm, could this really be? I thought that was kind of exciting. Definitely, so that's literally like our mo- our most favorite thing. So we <laughs> <laughs> we uh, are super into this show, uh, Supernatural. And one of the things yeah. we like, one of the things we like best is like <laughs> they'll take these monsters or yeah. myths or uh, creatures from a long, long time ago. The, this mythology that we essentially we don't know. It's not from a different culture. cultures. Too. Yeah, and then they'll they'll yep. interject it into their storyline, and it's like, wait, what? <laughs> and then we'll look up like what that particular creature is, and it's like, oh my gosh, this is what the Greeks used to worship. Like it was, and it's really cool. So I really like when you merge like these. These older mytho- this older mythology with a, a, a like a, a new storyline. Yeah. Like oh, thanks. Story. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, it makes you think, doesn't it? Because those stories have stayed around for a long time. So it makes you go, gosh, is there something more to it than mm-hmm. what we really know or what we're told? And, you know, even some of the creatures in, in uh, uh, my book or in the, our world, really, have used to be myths. Used to be, there used to be stories people would say, oh, there's these furry, fearsome men that live high in the mountains and people were like, yeah, you're crazy. And then we, you know, then we discovered the, the mountain gorilla and mm. then people who used to sail, you know, sailors would come back and tell tales of these giant sea creatures that would attack their ships with multiple tentacles. And we find out later the giant squid is real. So there's, so some of these could really be out there. So it's kind of fun to think about that. Absolutely. So, so of all the creatures that are in your book, like which one is your absolute favorite? Like the one that's like, Oh yeah, we crushed it putting <laughs> this one in here. You know what I love is the skyfish because they are uh, flying all around us right now, and we can't see them, but with the human eye. But people have caught them on film. That's one of the creatures you can go on the internet and see video of what people have said. This is a skyfish, and it's pretty fun. And then uh, they can be good or bad, so it's fun to put you know make them like anybody else, right? Any kind of person or creature can have a, a good person or a bad person. So there's. They, they have their own role in there, playing good guys and bad guys, but they're just fun to think about that they can actually fly through us, too, because they're supposedly made out of a different kind of matter. Oh, wow. That's literally, I, I freaking love that. So I like this, uh, <laughs> I like the conspiracy things on YouTube. Like, of course, I don't believe any of them because I'm not crazy, but the, uh, on YouTube, they'll, <laughs> they'll have a bunch of, like, conspiracies where it's like, oh, here's the, here's this trumpet that's blowing from this island next to New Jersey, which is real. It's like, a, there's an island, not on coast of New Jersey, but there's an island where there's just this sound that's made. And it's like people's theories are like, oh, they're on the island, they're building titans, or they're, uh, it's a weapons project by DARPA. Um, Oh, cool. I've, heard, I've heard aliens. Like I like I like when you take something that's like, oh, maybe that could like, be, yeah. yeah. Alien, like, yeah. That's yeah. my favorite. Thing. So, what is it like writing a series? Is it more fun to actually write a series rather than like a one-off publication where you, you know, you don't know if you're going to stop or keep going with it? I really like the series, and I think it's because I get to know my characters so well. So the the first one in a series, you have to kind of set up the world. So the first part of the Rampart Guards is. Jason doesn't know what's going on, and he's got to figure it out, and then you have to introduce how all of this works. Mm-hmm. Once you get through that, and, you, and you've known the characters, you get to just go on these adventures with them. So the next two, the Rampart, or excuse me, the League of Governors and the Clan Calling are the next uh, books in the series where we just get to go have fun and do this adventure, and, and there's scary stuff and battles and 
all that kind of good stuff without having to set it up. So I really like like that whole flow of the story keeps going, the characters get deeper, you already know them, so you don't have to spend the time to to meet them. So yeah. it's it's just really it's really exciting to keep it going that way. Awesome. Would you uh so would you have preferred to write under a publishing house rather than publishing independently? You know, I am open to both ways to do that, and the okay. reason I decided to do it uh this way with this book is I looked at, you know, I really I learned the whole publishing industry from traditional to independent to self-publishing and looked at how it works and and what makes books sell and and what helps and how the publishing industry has changed over the years and the bottom line for every book that really makes it out there is that people talk about it and people talk about it if it's a really good story like you know the martian was an independently published book and then it, it turned into a major motion oh, picture and yeah. he's got another book out now and it's supposed to be excellent so but it's because people talk about it even harry potter was out for a few years before people started word of mouth carrying that to big success so i thought you know what if i believe in the story that i'm writing then i should get it out there and the other part of that is the publishing uh, world in the traditional path is very long. So even if you – first you have to get an agent, then the agent has to sell your book to an editor inside a publishing house, and then they have to internally get – sell it again in a sense because they got to get marketing dollars and things. And even after all that, it's still 12 to 24 months before your book will be published just because that's how long their publishing cycle is. And I thought, I don't want to wait that long. So I went ahead and did – the Rampart Guards independently. I'm writing a new series right now doing NaNoWriMo, so it's really going to need a lot of editing, but <laughs> we'll get to that part. Nice. And that one, I now have an agent because she saw my the Rampart Guards and she saw the reviews it got and she called me and asked to represent me and she wants to take this new book and sell it traditionally. So we're going to see how that goes. So I, I'm open to the whole world of it and how it all can work together. And I think things have changed quite a bit to where – it, it can be a successful blend, uh, but that's that's how I got to getting the, the Rampart Guards out independently as opposed to continuing to push for a, a traditional path. Okay. So would you say as an independent author, would you say that uh, business acumen is just as important as the actual story itself? Or do you think that just you just put out great material and the world will carry it forward? You know, I would have to say – there's a, certainly a solid chance that put out good material and the world will carry you forward, but I think you've got a better chance of everything being successful if you do put on a business hat along mm -hmm. with all of that. So, you know, everything that my book my books go through is exactly the same that a traditional publishing company would do. So I have I have a professional cover designer, interior designer. It goes through a a developmental editor as well as a copy editor, and that's after I've already gone through critique groups and worked with people myself to get it uh, edited. And then um, <clears throat> yeah, it goes through a, a, a distribution house that's the same one that the professional, the, the traditional houses use. So it's got wide distribution, so you can get my books anywhere. You can go to your local bookstore if they don't have it. They, they can order it. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it through Kobo. You can get it through Barnes & Noble with the Nook. So it's it's exactly the same, but, but that takes a lot of business sense because I had to do the analysis and I had to work with professionals and I had to discover those. So I did to do the research to make sure I had the right people in place to make it work. So there's a lot of stuff that's, that's really important that goes into putting out a professional publication. And so if you have a good business sense and you're thinking that way too, I think you're going to be that much more successful. Are there like workshops and stuff like that to, uh, to gain, to gain that experience and know how, or do you just kind of have to like flail until you swim? <laughs> no. Yeah. There's tons of good information out there. One of the first things I did is I started, there's online workshops you can take. There's, uh, uh, what's her name? I'll try to remember her name as we're talking, but I went out to the San Francisco Writers Conference in about three years ago, four years ago, and they had a whole day, an add-on day that was all about self and independent publishing and how all that worked. And I, so I did that. I did a whole all day workshop on that. There's great books out there about it. Uh, there's all sorts of information. I also attended conferences in the Colorado area. We've got a really strong community of writers here. Mm -hmm. And so we have Rocky Mountain Fiction Writers Conference in September, and then we have Pikes Peak Writers Conference in April. And they both had really great information and workshops about independent publishing, and they, they still do every year. It's a, 
a lot of people want to learn about it, so it's an important track to offer to people. So there's a lot of good stuff out there for sure. Awesome. No need to flail. <laughs> well, that's good to know, just in case. So uh, in the league, uh, going back to your uh, your series in the in the second book and third book in the League of Governors and the Clan Calling, how do you merge the storylines to keep the same level of interest? Um, a lot of times, our favorite character will die, or the plot takes a turn you don't want it to. How do you transition from book to book and keep the same spark of interest through all three? What I did with uh, the Rampart Guards is I, I don't like leaving a lot of loose ends. I don't like reading books like that. So you read the whole thing and you you expect all the major points to be wrapped up at the end. But sometimes in a series, they'll leave you hanging on a mm-hmm. big cliffhanger. And you're like, wait a minute, I've been reading this whole book to figure out what's going to happen. I don't, I don't want to wait for the, you know, another year for the next book. Right. I don't like to do that. But what I do is put a tiny snippet in of what might be happening in the next book. So, Everything's resolved in the Rampart Guards, but then this little thing happens, and you go, hmm, that's curious. So hopefully that makes the person want to keep reading, plus hopefully they like the characters, they like what they've read so far, so they they want to have that kind of adventure again. Yeah. And so they go to the next one. And then I did something a little different with the next two books because they're actually – I'm calling them both book two, so – Book two dash Jason and book two dash Sadie. Oh, wow. In book one, Jason meets Sadie and they become really good friends. But in in Jason's story, he leaves Salton, the town where they live, and goes to London. And it didn't make sense for Sadie to go with him. But I love her so so much. She's a strong female character and she's smart. And uh, I didn't want to leave her behind. So what I did is Jason has his own story in London, and at the exact same time on the same timeline, Sadie's got her story back in Salton. So League of Governors and Clan Calling are side-by-side books, totally different stories, just the same timeline. So they've got a a scene together at the beginning Mm -hmm. and a scene at the end where they come back together. So now you know they both both live. (laughs) So so yeah, that's how I did that. It's a little bit different, but I just was so excited about both stories and not losing sight of Sadie that I, I decided to do something different there. So when you, when you're writing these, how long does it typically take you to to finish one of your novels off? Like, is it is it one uh, of those things where you uh you you bang out ten thousand words a day, like every day for three months, and then you chop it down, or like how does it work for you? Well, the Rampart Guards took me five years to write because I I learned I learned as I went, and I didn't want to you know a lot of authors when they first write a book, they will. Uh, scrap their first book because they learn by the time they're done all the things that they didn't do quite right. But I loved the story so much I didn't want to do that. So I kept re- rewriting it. And every time I would take another class or learn something new and realize I wasn't doing something as well as I could, so I'd go back and fix it. So that took five years. Then I wrote The Clan Calling and The Rampart or The League of Governors in about a year and a half. I started writing them together, side by side, and then I realized that wasn't going to work very well. So I stopped writing clan and continued and finished league. And that took me probably, probably six months. And then I went back and finished clan, which was probably another four months. So I think, um, I, I can't tell you for sure how, how I work. Cause some days I do 5,000 words. Uh, sometimes I don't do any because I'm busy researching. So there's so much more to it than just writing. Yeah. Cause you, you know, you, 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 you type along and all of a sudden you go, Oh, like in the Rampart Guards, I was writing something about the electric eel, and then I went, huh. And I looked it up, and the electric eel isn't an eel. It's a knife fish. And so I, and I needed to put that in there. So, I, so you know, he, the, the Uncle Alexander, who's a brilliant man, is telling the story. He has to know what he's talking about. So I have to make sure I know what I'm talking about when I write. And <laughs> those kinds of things take you down rabbit holes for a while. So I can see that. some days there's lots of writing. Some days there's more research. I was going to ask you, so uh, when you're doing research, like how deep do you go? Like uh, do you end up going to the library and pulling up volumes on this uh, strange mythology? Sounds like she goes deep. Electric eel, I always thought was an eel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I do. I go as deep as the character needs to, to be. Yeah. Uh, I sometimes go deeper because I just like learning and I'm curious about things. So I'll keep going on things. And then I also always – bookmark all this information. I use Scrivener and Scrivener uh, lets you put your research right in there with your your writing and your document and your character sketches, all these great things. So I put them there. So I, I can always go back and add more to it as I'm revising or editing. If I discover that I need more information there, I have it still ready. I don't have to go 
research for it again. So uh, it's it's it just really depends on what's happening with the story and what's happening with the character. All right. And tell us one more time where, you, where uh, people can find your work and maybe more information on you. Yeah. So my, my website is wendyterrian.com. It's W-E-N-D-Y-T-E-R-R-I-E-N. And <clears throat> excuse me, there's links from there to all of the other social media sites. As far as the books go, there's the, the books are on there too with links. Uh, but you can really get them anywhere that you would, you, where, wherever your, fav- your favorite place to buy books is, whether that's Amazon or your local bookstore or Barnes & Noble. Uh, it's available. If not in stock, they can order it for you. So yeah, it's all out there. All right, perfect. So we'll link to uh, the Ramparts Guard, uh, Ram- the Rampart Guards, uh, the League of Governors, and the Clan Calling uh, all on polysite.org. Uh, so subscribe to the Polysite Podcast, and we're out. Bye. Bye. <laughs>